Welcome to my channel and in this video I want to talk about Arteza gouache. I have a set of 60 colors and I own this set since last December, so I purchased it in the end of the last year when Delphine very kindly sent me as a Christmas gift Amazon gift card, so I decided that I want to try this set I already used it during the beginning of this year in several of my books, but shame on me, but I didn't make a swatching card for this paint. And when I selected colors, I simply looked at the colors on the cover and it's definitely not the best thing for choosing right shades of color. So I decided that finally I need to do my swatching and I also want to talk about my first impression from this set. I already own several gouache paints from other manufacturers. I have gouache from White Knights, the same manufacturer, Russian manufacturer, who creates quite famous watercolors. And I do love those gouache. They look like this. Also, here we have Ukrainian gouache, which is also quite decent, but the biggest differences in gouache, which I owned previously, and this set, first of all, it's the form, the shape of the gouache, because here we have paints in tubes and Ukrainian gouache and Russian gouache mostly available in these jars of various sizes, smaller or bigger, but I discovered that I don't, as I don't use gouache quite often. Gouache in jars, it tends to dry more quickly comparing to tubes, so this was the first reason why I wanted to have a set with tubes. The second reason it's because this gouache it's considered of professional level and they mostly makes set, make sets of primary colors and they think that artists they are quite capable to mix some complicated shades of color by themselves having only basic colors. So I think that the biggest set of uh, White Knight squash it's maybe 18 or 20 colors and you know that I have a soft spot for big sets. I know that it's possible to mix colors by myself, but sometimes it's much more convenient to have pre-mixed colors. There is also some differences in this gouache and my previous gouaches when you start to work with it on paper, but we will talk about it later. I want to show you first couple of my works, which I did with this gouache. I used it here for the backgrounds. For example, for this spread. And this spread. And I discovered also that it's a very helpful for my fairies in Dreamland book, where I need to cover big empty areas of the background. In the Arteza gouache it was very helpful. Here I have my first page, which I did with Arteza, and I was absolutely happy. It really helped me to do background quickly and exactly what I needed here. I was very pleased how paints behaved on the paper, so I was absolutely happy. Now let's have a look at the paint. I decided to have a set of sorry guys of 60 colors but in smaller size. I think that Arteza um, they have other sets with bigger tubes but with smaller amount of colors. But as I use these paints not very often, for me the big variety of colors was as it was a preference. Also, I love that in this set, apart from normal matte colors, you know that the main difference between gouache and watercolors is that gouache is opaque 
and it creates nice matte finish after drying. This gouache is not permanent, so you are able to apply water and reactivate it. There is also some types of gouache which are acrylic gouache which is permanent. Mostly they are made from Turner, but today we are talking about non-permanent gouache. So I was very interested to discover, so, so apart from regular matte gouache, they also have several pearlescent and metal colors included like silver, bronze, gold. And I thought that these colors they also can be quite helpful. I already own several pearlescent and metal watercolors as they are good, but some of the colors, especially light pearlescent colors, they are almost invisible on the paper. So I was thinking that if it's a problem of, of watercolors, maybe pearlescent gouache, which is opaque, maybe it will be more helpful to work on the white paper. So it was another point why I decided to purchase this set. On the cover we have the full palette and I actually do love how they <coughs> created this palette, so I will be swatching all my colors exactly in the same order. We have first regular colors and then pearlescent colors. Almost everything here is opaque, only several colors are marked as semi-opaque or transparent. I think that we have one transparent, which is ultramarine, and several semi-opaque, like Prussian green, sap green, one scarlet, uh, lemon yellow, and deep green. So it will be quite interesting to look at the difference between opaque and transparent paints. Inside paints they are in this a very comfortable trays. When I purchased an Arteza pencils I didn't like this flimsy plastic trays, but for gouache I discovered that I do love them. It's nice that paints are sorted in color palettes, so if you need to find like yellow, then slightly darker yellow, slightly lighter shades. Very helpful, you can simply look at the paints which we have and maybe to grab similar col colors which are neighbors. And these paints maybe they are not big, but for me it's enough. We have color name, we have um, uh, opacity sign, we have um, also sign regarding the light fastness, which is not very important for me, and we have a list of pigments which were used for creating this color. Let me show you quickly all these very cute tubes. I really enjoy looking at them, I think that design is quite nice. I decided that I will be storing them in this box very Kind of very nice to use. I need to return a couple of green colors, they are somewhere on my table. Here we have uh, pearl white rose, gold, pearl apricot, bronze, so really very eager to test these colors. I think that before I tested only one of them, I used pearlescent pink together with regular Bardot colors when I did background for Alice. And it was really nice to have this difference of textures. I first put a layer of matte gouache, then on top of it a layer of pearlescent, and it really created a very nice effect. Definitely this method I will be using more for my backgrounds. So that's all the colors which I own. And finally let's start swatching them. From my previous experience, color which we have on the tube, it's quite um, similar to the color which I had on uh, paper, only in a couple of 
places with bright green colors there was difference so I definitely need a more realistic swatch card to use if I want to use this gouache more frequently and if I want to use it for more realistic colorings. On my swatch card I indicated for myself colors which are semi-opaque and transparent and the rest of the colors are opaque and in the set we have two whites titanium white and simple white you know that in gouache and in acrylic there are two types of white titanium white is more opaque and usually it's more helpful for masking black lines so i put here this testing black to be able to check how this paint will be able to mask black and this white it's used for mixing with other colors to create more pastel shades and i would recommend if you plan to color a lot of gouache uh, a lot with gouache then i always suggest to purchase additional white because maybe it's the most helpful paint in gouache painting. I already told the story then when I was a girl and when we started to use gouache paints in school I hated these paints. I don't know why but when we painted in school no one told us how to mix paints so I owned a set of maybe eight colors and they all were extremely bright. No one told us that by mixing with white we can create huge variety of beautiful shades. So our paintings they were terrible because we used only primary colors and as a small child I wasn't able to got this idea by myself. So I hated gouache and I thought that it's ridiculous. I don't know why somewhere could use this gouache for <laughs> more serious paintings and only later when I started to color and when I watched several videos where people used a white as a base color and added some more intense and highly pigmented gouache to create various colors I started to appreciate these paints and I discovered that it has huge possibilities and that serious artists they create beautiful landscapes beautiful paintings with these paints so I was really eager to try them myself when with my previous gouaches by Ukrainian and Russian manufacturer they were more thick more they had like more thick texture, I don't know how to explain it more. So mostly I prefer to use quite hard synthetic brushes like this one. And with this gouache which has more tender texture, I discovered that my softer brushes which I usually, they are also synthetic, but uh, they are closer to real brushes and that's brushes which I usually use for watercolors. But I discovered that with Arteza these brushes they are more helpful, they um, can blend paints better, they create softer textures without leaving pencil strokes. So maybe my test I will be doing with harder brush to be able to do these small areas but I would recommend to use softer brushes with this gouache because it's, it has quite delicate and nice texture. I also discovered that when I used Ukrainian and Russian uh, paints, when I used them for doing backgrounds, they have perfect opacity, they have beautiful colors, but texture was a little bit rough, so to use pencils on top of it created a very grainy effect, so it wasn't possible to add some small details with pencils or to uh, add some shades on top of the gouache with pencils, pencil strokes were really very visible. This gouache, because of the more delicate texture, it's 
much easier to work on top of it with pencils and I was really very happy to discover this treat. For me it's a very important so I think that in future I will be using this gouache much more frequently comparing to the gouache I owned previously. This one it's really nice for professional paintings for canvas but on paper and especially if you want to do uh, um, layering to work on the, with, on the small details later with pencils, this gouache for me it's much more convenient to use. Well, sorry guys, finally I will stop talking and I will start swatching.
here is my finished swatch card for Arteza gouache paints and I am absolutely happy with this swatching. I wasn't very impressed with whites. Definitely my white titanium from White Nice cover black much better, so it was the only paint where I wasn't very impressed and I didn't see any difference between two whites but all other colors I absolutely love. I do love their palette. A lot of colors look quite natural without excessive brightness. They have a lot of interesting complicated colors like this blush pink, ice blue, sky blue. I love sage green and seaweed green. I love all this latte brown, toffee tan, very interesting stone blue, cerulean blue, beautiful colors. Also, I was quite impressed how highly pigmented they are. Even with the smallest amount of, of water, uh, you are able to um, cover quite big area. Well, I used here almost dry brush and I took paints directly from the tube. So uh, that was which how I did almost all the swatches. Only on couple of swatches I added water like on Prussian blue and Bordeaux red and after that they still were very bright but started to look a little bit more like watercolors. They started to be more fluid on paper so you can use these paints in both ways and I really love that it's a lot of uh, things to experiment with. I really think that palette is uh, very good. One paint has a little bit strange name. I don't know why they called this um, flourish and pink, peach, red. I've never seen peach in such color. For me it's opera red, quite famous color. It's nice, it's just the name is strange. Also, I hadn't noticed big difference between paints which were marked at, as semi-opaque and opaque. I do love their opacity, their coverage and I really love this nice velvet matte cover. Really, really beautiful. I hope that you will be able to see it on the screen. Also, they are quite forgiving for beginners. Without many efforts from my part when I did the swatches, the cover is without visible brush strokes, so if you simply will make brush strokes in one direction, you will be able to get a very accurate, very nice background using these paints. Well, talking about and colors, my favorite is bronze. It's absolutely beautiful and I'm eager to use it somewhere in my colorings. All other colors are also not bad. They don't have a very intense shining. You can see this pearlescent effect and the best thing is that they are visible on white paper. So they don't have that problem which watercolors have. First I was thinking that maybe I need a bigger set of uh, pearlescent paints. But now I think that it's enough for me. I don't use a lot of and effects on my pictures, so this variety of colors, I think that it will be enough for me. What I can say is that I have some acrylic paints in and colors and my biggest problem was that they always look uh, streaky with visible brush strokes. These paints, they don't have such problem. They are perlescent, but in the same way they have good coverage and it's definitely what I love. Well, I hope that now when I have the full range of paints I will be using them more often and of course I will continue my experiments. For example, I will be using these paints with white to get a lot of pastel colors and I hope that it will be it will be very helpful for the books where background is big, empty and terrifying. Honestly, I am not a big fan of Arteza company, but this product I definitely can recommend. I am happy that I purchased it 
and I think that it's a quality product, especially if price is reasonable, you know that sometimes they have quite nice discounts. I purchased it during the sales, so price was really good and for such price I definitely can recommend this product for beginners. If you want to test something new and quick for your backgrounds, I think that you will enjoy this set. I hope that I will do more videos soon and I thank you for watching and for listening.